Hello, Michael. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is quite an honor. Oh, the boys are back in town. Look at this. We've never really broadcast together, like uh, no. as equals. You are you were always my underling anytime you were on with me. Yeah, we, this is the this is the first time we've been together since the uh, last. Well, look at you now. Fans. You've really built yourself up into something. I don't know. The, that uh, Patreon life is looking pretty sweet. I'm thinking about uh, switching oh, on over. <laughs> switching on over to, uh, I don't know, might be a... Uh, it's nice. It's nice. Be, it's a nice, cozy environment where no one really bothers you. You know, you Except isolate the, yourself back behind the paywall. It's nice. Uh, I don't want to mention his name, but I believe there is a certain Sarandis who's brought up on your show quite a bit. And oh, that piece to, of shit. <laughs> he seems to uh, go back and forth. No, he's a nice guy. But yeah, we have one heckler. But that, that's how it should be. Nice, nice. So, yeah. So, uh, Blind Mike and Justin at it again. Look at, oh, look at us. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? If you were to tell me right after Socko, Mike would no longer be with the Kirk Minahan show. And I would be uh, not your replacement. I just get paid now. Yeah, you pushed me out. Ah! Justin was texting me every day. I, I, I don't think they need you. <laughs> Just don't yeah, don't worry about it. Don't come back. You're, you're working your mental health. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, the entire the entire month of August that Kirk was off, I was just uh, feeling like uh, if he comes back, do you think he really wants like you to sit in that chair? You think it might be your <laughs> fault? You know, he uh, remember your soccer performance? Oh, Madawaska! Oh, I kept going back and back and forth. So well, thanks for. Uh, I appreciate you having me back. Some people said the YouTube channel couldn't get any. Any better than when I uh, reigned over it? But hey, hey, there's, there's you've proven there's, them all wrong. Truth to that, uh, we all we all missed drop the mic. So there's a couple things, you know. I just thought we could go over some stories from the week. I know Kirk and Steve are working on the case, so they're not really hitting on the uh, the important topics of the week. Right. And uh, there, there there were a couple things that happened this week. Uh, I the the main story of the week, I guess, would be this whole Meghan Markle Prince Harry thing. But I really have no interest in it. I don't know anything. No, That's, I did. Uh, I I don't really care about it. I will say I thought it was funny. I forgot. This is how this is how woke I am. Mm -hmm. I forgot Meghan Markle was biracial. So when I heard the clip of her telling Oprah, like, yeah, some members of the royal family are worried about the skin color of the baby, <laughs> I was like, that is quite a fucking accusation. <laughs> well, I mean, I would, I would like. If, I don't know if she was white, I'd be too. Uh, I think, uh, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I was like, holy shit. But even even so, yeah, it is. I mean, it is weird. But yeah, who? I don't understand the the craze over the royal family, especially yeah. over here. I don't get why we give a fuck. Yeah, my, my my favorite part of all this is all the conservatives getting angry at Meghan Markle, <laughs> who are like, oh, look at how much the you know the king and the queen have done for you, and now you're going and you're shitting on. Are they doing that? Yes. Oh, yeah, Jesus see, see Christ. Like, uh, I've seen like Ben Shapiro, like imagine being Prince Philip and going through, you know, your country during, you know, the Cold War. Yes. And now this woman is. Uh, yeah, he's, a, he, he's had a very, very tough fucking <laughs> yeah, Prince yeah. Philip. Yeah. What so, an asshole. I, I'm sick of that side, too. I know everyone thinks I'm a fucking uh, alt-right proud boy, but Jesus Christ, have they gotten exhausting. I don't know. I just think it's funny that <laughs> they're sitting down with the prince and princess to discuss <laughs> how their royal baby was going to, you know, throw the monarchy <laughs> for a loop. I don't know. That's it's very important. It's very yes. important to make sure that that seat is stable for the next uh, few generations. Yes. So I don't know. I just get upset when uh, when I see Americans, you know, going crazy over this. You get upset. Yeah, because people Reina died over this. Reina, let's pretend you're at your computer. Okay. I want. I want to picture it. What do you do? You, uh, show me upset Justin at this. Jesus fucking Christ! People thought this is why we <laughs> fought the fucking Revolutionary War, so we don't have to deal with this goddamn <laughs> shit anymore. And we have legitimate Americans crying over the fact that Prince William or Prince whatever his name is is you know married a biracial actress, and now she moved to America, and they you know got upset and they denounced the crown. Which I don't know. The whole thing is just. Yeah, that's pretty much. And this is all when you're alone reading the headlines. Yes, this is all by myself. You know, I'm just watching the Oprah video, going, "Ah, Oprah's making some good points here. She's really speaking for the common man." You I've know, groomed you well. <laughs> have you seen uh you, you see the meme going around of her face? No, uh, no, I only heard the uh, audio of it. I, I, I mean, obviously, I guess, but <laughs> I haven't seen the video. So, but it, I, it sounded like her jaw dropped based on her reaction. Yes. What? Was, what? How can you? Uh, how can? You know, how can the royal family, the royal family of all people, uh, believe it or not, have some uh, antiquated practices? 
Um, now, I, I should I should point out, since uh, this is your boss, didn't Kirk say, I don't give a fuck about the royal family, and you're diluting his YouTube channel with such talk? Nah, Kirk's on break this week. <laughs> <laughs> you're running the show. When Kirk is away, Justin will <laughs> No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't uh, yeah, I mean, I don't give a fuck about the royal family. But, yeah, um, I know. We'll just spend, you know, two minutes on it. So I got a, uh, I got some, you know, some interesting things have happened this past, uh, this past weekend and this past couple of days. Yesterday was International Women's Day, which Alba a very happy. Uh, it was. She was upset. I didn't get. I don't. I don't acknowledge it. I consider every day International Women's Day. Oh, that is, uh, that that is very good. Well, treat them like shit every day is what I say. <laughs> they they don't get used to any. Well, did you see this whole Burger King controversy? I did. <laughs> so yesterday I wake up, you know, it's like two, three PM. I'm checking checking out what I missed. And I like hosting so, Justin, by the way. Have you seen this, folks? Now I, I'll take you take you through my morning. <laughs> so I'm scrolling through it and I see that Burger Queen is trending. And I just picture, you know, there's something going on. So then I see a screenshot of someone says Burger King tweeted out, uh, women belong in the kitchen. And I'm like, well, obviously that's fake. Obviously, Burger King would not tweet out women belong in the kitchen. Right. So you click on the Burger King you pay Twitter page, and there it is, right front and center. Women belong in the kitchen. So I go, okay, there has to be more, more, more to this. You click on it, and then they said something about you know how uh, only twenty five percent of all culinary chefs in the UK are are women, and how they're starting this new initiative to push uh, for more culinary training to get women into you know, deeper and more higher up cooking roles. And uh, and Twitter kind of lost their shit. There was, um, both sides kind of got upset with, uh, it, it was a lose-lose situation. I tweeted out that this might be the worst marketing strategy of 2021. I don't know. I mean, or it was good because everyone was talking about Burger King for a day. It was I'm good. certain they would not have tweeted that out without knowing like, ah, oh, people are going to get angry at this. You know what I mean? You well, can't say women belong in the kitchen without knowing that the assholes who don't do one second of thought about it are going to get annoyed. But I, this is why I'm like, kind of, I'm getting sick of these topics because obviously I'm very interested in it. And I talk about it a lot, but mm-hmm. it's just getting exhausting because now, now the side that I'm on is fucking exhausting. Yeah, it's like so, who who gives up? Stop getting worked up over this. Who really gives a shit? So I agree. But did you did you see yesterday that that tweet is no longer up? Oh, of course. It is no longer up and the explanation is up. And they actually sent out an apology tweet where it says, we hear you. We got our initial tweet wrong and we're sorry. Our aim was but to draw attention. But they didn't attention. get it wrong. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> they were playing on a stereotype. They were making fun of people who think like that and saying, no, no, no. We actually should hire more women. They didn't do anything wrong. That's yes. That's the fucked up thing is they're attacking people where your message is, let's hire more women. Yes. And it's like, fuck you, you said it wrong. So I just think that this 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 campaign strategy works 20 years ago. If they put out a newspaper ad that says women belong in the kitchen, and then beneath it it says that's because there's not enough women, you know, culinary chefs and yeah. women, you know, make great food and, and all this other stuff. And you know, they don't have the same opportunities as men to to get higher up into the restaurant business. I understand that. But who is going to see this tweet? And think, ah, there you go. They got it. They changed Meaning it up a little what? bit. Meaning Thinking like, oh, like they pulled me in with that. I was I was about to type an angry response, but I see what they said. Because some of the uh, responses to the uh, aforementioned uh, apology tweet are, I did not accept this apology. You kept defending the horrific tweet after hundreds of women told you. Horrific. It was incredibly <gasps> inappropriate. It I was, was horrified. <laughs> And what baffles me is that anyone thought this was a good idea in the first place. If 2020 ta- taught us anything, it's that oppression is not a joke. So there are a million different. Oh, that's fucking... true. Oppression is not a joke. People are now calling for the CEO of Burger King to step down, uh, lacking, citing lacking diversity on the board. Uh, and, and the reason why I well, say... Isn't that what they were trying to... <laughs> I guess on the board is different, but yeah, yeah they yeah, were trying well, to solve yeah, a diversity let's, issue. Let's not get too crazy here. I mean, well, uh, you know, you can you can cook us a steak, but they're not letting you. Uh... So, so the reason why I think this is such an extreme failure on Burger King's part 
is because they aren't in the social media business. They don't make money from clicks. They don't make money from reactions. Now they have divided the Burger King fan base into some people. I mean, this is what a ridiculous fucking. <laughs> I, I, I agree, but you have you have people are boycotting Burger King on Twitter now. I'm it's, sure. And I'm sure all those people ate Burger King every yes, day and now yes, they're going to stop. Sure, uh, I'm sure uh, Bernie 2024 Kamala Queen is uh, <laughs> was was chowing down Bacon Kings left and left and right. It's I mean, it's exhausting to get that worked up over over that shit. And I would do it all the time. Like I, I would and still do sometimes where I see that shit and I get very angry about it and post about it. But it's like tomorrow we're going to forget that this happened. And in six months, we're going to go, wasn't there some, like, isn't Burger King racist or something? And some people won't go because of that. <laughs> and some people will just forget that it ever happened. Like, it, it to pretend you're mad about this. Everyone knows what they meant. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's not a person on earth that didn't understand. Immediately, uh, uh, I think Alba's actually the one that told, she's like, do you see the Burger King thing? And she read it to me. And I was like, oh, well, obviously they're talking about, they must be hiring more women uh, to cook. There's no one on the planet that thought they, they were work. promoting fucking <laughs> women work, out of like, the workforce. They were just like, they were just like, ah, they got to you know, pipe down. We get it. It's International Women's Day, but they just tweeted out women belong in the kitchen. Something like that. <laughs> but I, but, uh, I mean, speaking of uh, very powerful women, what I'm excited for you, you teased uh, before the show, you teased some Kennedy audio for me. I, I do. I have some uh, <laughs> Carson and Kennedy audio. I'm so. curious about this because um the uh the skirt over there was driving around the other day okay and informed me that uh evidently i did not hear this audio nor could i find it but uh there's an audio but i guess kennedy's sister wrote a an erotic novel of some kind oh. and kennedy did the narration oh so get to work on that folks <laughs> Yeah, I'll definitely look into they that. They played it on Carson and Ken I, or she, at least she said they played it on Carson and Kennedy. I couldn't find the book, but yeah, start start digging on uh, some good Kennedy audio. Now, what what do you think? What goes through your mind when Alba says she's listening to Carson and Kennedy? Are you just a dumb broad? You know, get back <laughs> in the kitchen is what I say. <laughs> so no, I, she, I know, have... I know. She she just she clicks around. You know, I don't think she's a Kennedy fan, or she's just disloyal, and I should do something about that. So there is some, uh, as you remember, last Monday, there was some bad radio. There was a War of the Roses between Carson and Kennedy where, I forget the gentleman's name, but he was uh, back from Boston, back from New York because he was having some, you know, financial troubles and he right. met up with an ex and they spent a weekend just, you know, fucking all, all night long and <laughs> back and forth. And, right. you know, he said he loves her and she wants to know, is it true? So, you know, Carson and Kennedy call him up. Well, there was actually a listener who listened to this segment and he called in and he said, listen, let's get something straight. It's not just the boys who have been fucking around. Hmm. You're about to meet John and John is going to tell you a story that's going to break your heart and make you want to date him, I think. John was listening to the show last week when we had War of the Roses on Thursday morning. And we played a little clip. It was like a teaser clip of what was going to be happening on War of the Roses. If you missed War of the Roses last week, it was about a woman uh, who was uh, dating a guy. And it turns out he was also dating another woman. How can men do this? Where they lie so, and you're, you're just with I'm them and, the whole... and they say that they <laughs> love you. The and that they're like stringing along two women. What is this? Well, well I should I f lie to this you. girl? I didn't lie to you. I mean, it's just time. different now. You're wasting I, so, my someone, time. Someone heard I mean, this. it was it was you know mutual. I mean, we just needed somebody to comfort each other. And I said, "What's the big deal?" No. I mean, that's all really it was that's for me. It's just you different now. Love somebody. I mean, you know, I do love you, but it's just different now. I mean, you know, um, I knew I'd be comfortable with you. I mean, it was mutual. What's the big deal? You needed me, and that's it. This is completely okay. wasting my time. How much time. of a recap I'm not did we need? Disposable Carson. doll Jesus. that you can just and leave. I have real feelings. And I have, I have a future that I want to build with someone, and you're messing it up. By the way, New War of the Roses tomorrow at 8.15. Oh, what a and tease. then we got a call from this guy, and he said to just call him John, and he had a story, Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's going on? Not too Listen much, is to it? Show. My name's, let's call, <laughs> <laughs> call me John. What's going on, That's John? Just call, just call me John. I was listening to your show. I just heard you guys 
talk about a segment you're going to do where a guy is stringing two women along, yeah. and I'm actually going going through that right now as a guy being strung along by a girl while there's another guy that she was totally untruthful about and everything else. Wow. I noticed the change, started asking, hey, is there somebody else? You know, no, 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 of course not. And then, you know, sure, sh- anything. It- Caught himself there. I don't know if you. I don't know if you got that, Mike. He, he did. Say, he sure did. Sure as shit. He's but, he's very good. So I I was wondering while listening to this, is this because we know War of the Roses is fake? Is yeah. Well, a- I, uh, it's funny. Someone tagged when we talked about this the other day. Someone tagged all of us on a tweet mm-hmm. and said, uh, "My girlfriend thinks War of the Roses is real." So there are people driving around that are like, "Oh shit! <laughs> oh, <laughs> this I guy's remember. fucking around on this broad." <laughs> I remember when uh, my mom would like drive me to like to middle school in the morning. We would listen to Mix One Four One. Sometimes we'd jump around from like Kiss One Away at Mix One Four One. And I thought it was real. I was like, "Damn, all these people are cheating on each other." Yeah, because you were yeah. a child. Awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but so, you know, I mean, to to be fair to people like that, I think they're the immediate thought is not that they're lying. You know what I mean? Like you're not thinking about recording laws or whatever. You're just on the ride to work and kind of half listening, and you're like, "Oh God, they caught this guy cheating." Because I, 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 I don't think the people that believe it are listening to that show every day. Yep. And if they are, they're. Just, I guess you're. I think there's something to just not thinking about it and going, oh, because I think if you really sat down and were like, hey, every Thursday <laughs> at seven fifteen and nine fifteen, they find two new people cheating on their husband or or <laughs> or a girlfriend or wife, and uh, they have they've never missed a week. <laughs> So, 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 so this guy, you know, he calls in and he, you know, he sends something a little fishy with his, uh, quote unquote, remember he called him, uh, we, he called her, his girlfriend. And then, it's another guy. Oh, how, John, did, I'm so sorry. how did you find out? Yeah, John? Too. How did you find how out? Did I find, how did I find out? Yeah. Watching social media, a guy posted something on our Facebook page. He posted a picture of of a woman bowling and it clicked in my head that she had a bowling alley half a mile from her house where they serve drinks. So I went by and sure as anything, because her she was there with him. With the other guy. Oh, yeah, they come were on. together. And it's just like there you go. John. That's so it goes it goes yeah, it, goes, it, it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So you're you not with her by. anymore though, right? Uh-oh, you, here you we told go. her what Mike, what do you think? You think he's still with her? What do you What do you think John has? What I'm more fascinated by is I think this is a, I don't think this is fake. I think this is a real guy. I'm 50 50 on it because <laughs> at first I thought it was real, and then when you hear it kind of later on when Kennedy starts talking, oh okay, it, it gets kind of the fake vibes. Because right now I. I don't see anything that would necessarily be fake because they're not recording anyone without their knowledge. It's just a guy with a story that's so boring that it, it is very believable. Yep. But uh, we'll, we'll maybe maybe she'll change we'll, my mind. Listen to how the story goes because it, okay. it goes the way the radio would want it to go. You know when you've what? moved on. I, I told her what I know. And... Oh, why did you stop? Oh, this is strange. Leave this part in. It's the best work we've of done course. so far. You know what I mean? I don't tell people how Yeah, I but that doesn't mean she gets to you. go and bang other dudes. <laughs> That's yeah, not how relationships yeah. work. Yeah, I suppose you're right. You are a good <laughs> man with a kind heart and deserving of good things and people surrounding yeah, you who well, love we, you and we, lift we, you we, up. We, That's we, what you we, deserve. We, so, turns out he's staying with her. Uh, he said they're, they're quote unquote friends with benefits. So pretty much his fuck buddies having, you know, sex with other people. And Imagine calling a radio station about that. I guess that's the one thing that would make me think it's fake is that who would pick up the phone? <laughs> because also they're not like a call in show. So you'd have to look up their number. So this guy yes. went through the trouble of Googling their number, finding the right. Well, no, that's Entercom's number. I have to find the actual call in number. <laughs> well, I need to tell Carson Kennedy this story. I know that all these War of the Roses bits, these places have like submission forms, which I assume just gets like go nowhere. Yeah. You can say, you know, I'm Mike and I think Alba is cheating on me with George. And, you know, you, you put like George a. George is a real scumbag. Yeah. But, you know, you put like a, your email in, your phone number in, all that, 
all that jazz. So my favorite part about this, though, is when Kennedy goes, you know what, John? You're too nice of a guy. <laughs> well, uh, let me go back a second. There, I didn't realize there are submission forms. Yes. You, you did not know this? Why haven't we been filling these out every every week? <laughs> uh, because I believe they go nowhere. Ah, but still, it might be worth a shot. Uh, yeah, that could be a uh, thing we get into. Just uh, hmm. flooding, <laughs> flooding the submission forms. Would you know? the names Mike and Alba be too obvious? Uh, hmm. not. I'll, think... I'll get to work on this. That's interesting. I did not realize that because I knew it was all fake, so I didn't really even think to look for submission forms. Mm-hmm. But becoming even just becoming one of those guys that does the fake calls, they keep that under uh, lock and key. Like it's hard to, it's hard to get into that business for some reason. Yeah. I was listening to an old uh, Opie and Anthony bit of uh, Jocktober and it was actually mm-hmm. with Carson and Kennedy and someone called in and said, listen, I'm one of these people that, uh, you know, that pretends to be cheating on him. And he says he makes yeah. us $75 uh, you, a pop. You know who did this. that originally, I guess is uh, Larry, the cable guy. Really call in, uh, you know, forty different radio stations a day. I think that's how he got his start or something. When he back when he was Dan Whitney. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, this 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 guy was saying how he makes seventy five dollars a pop, but it's like super exclusive trying to get into this thing. Like, it's not just like oh you're, you know, just sign up and you know we'll send you a check for fifty bucks and and you do this. Right. Like you have to sign. Because they don't want just, they don't want assholes like me that'll just go on a podcast and be like, look at these fucking idiots. So, so let's finish up. What, with they, that, what, they, what do they call it? Friends with benefits is what we were. Yeah, we aren't any we aren't anything official. So I'm really pissed off that I really be. You know what I mean, I'm, I'm a I'm a pretty big in shape guy. Like I'm big. I'm in shape. You know, and I'm just oh, getting no. older, so I choose to fight my battles differently. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm not going to go cause some huge, crazy scene or anything like well, that. That's but good. realistically, it goes both ways. So whatever you guys are about to play on the radio about some <laughs> chicken and strung along, remember this. They do it, too. Yes. That's oh, good. John. That's good advice, John. I that's right. you. All right, guys. Be good. Have a uh, great morning. Huh? All right. You, too. Talk to you later. I right, love the show. Later. Thanks. That's my favorite part. I think it goes, love the show. Love the show. So yeah, I'm a little torn. It's, Although, uh, if it was a real caller, they might say, just say, uh, love you, love the show. I know uh, Ma- a guy named Man Cow used to do that. Like, if you'd call in, the call yep. screen would say, or right, just start by saying, uh, hey, Man Cow, love you, love the show. I know at the end they always go, like, and who plays uh, the best hits in all of Boston? You got to go, like, mix 104. Mix 1. Yeah, it's very Kiss 108 or some, something of that like. Yeah. But it's, uh, there's, a, there's another Kennedy bit that you kind of brought up. Uh, on the show Monday, Steve didn't play any audio, but uh, I wanted to see how, how y- you would do in this. Uh, uh-huh. As you know, Jared Carabas came in on Wednesday right after the uh, trivia battle yes. between uh, Team Nightmare. And he, he was very down. He might be uh, might be down. So I wanted to see. I know I've been talked about as being the replacement for either Steve or, or Jared, but I would right. like to see your reaction on some of this hard-hitting trivia. How I would Kennedy. do? All right. If I can beat Kennedy? Uh, yes. So this segment right. is I'll called... play your we'll, game. We'll... we'll, we'll you'll, you'll know what the segment's called as soon as they play the intro song. Okay. You can't beat Kennedy. Don't even try, homeboy. You can't beat her. She's gonna school you, sucker. You can't beat Kennedy. You can try, but man... You can't beat her. You ain't gonna win. It doesn't even fit. I can't you touch this. No. You can, but you can. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not only is it a 30 year old song, <laughs> you know what the kids are listening to? <laughs> you know, MC Hammer. Can't touch this. Can't beat Kennedy. It's so many more syllables. So, that, you know, that's how they get the kids listening. They go, oh, I know this song. This is that hot new, uh, yeah. you know, Mega Millionaire. MC Hammer. MC Hammer. Oh, he's he's popular. So they've also been doing this bit. This is this is to show you how much radio has changed. I remember this as well for middle school. Carson and Kennedy really? were doing the exact You're the Carson same and Kennedy thing. guy. I was in seventh grade. Like I wasn't allowed to choose what was on the radio. I couldn't yeah, be like, hey mom, true. let's listen to Yeah, when you, know, you were in seventh Marshall grade, these, this was the hits. It's like, you know, Family Guy or South Park and Carson and Kennedy when you're in middle school. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean so they were doing the same thing. So anyway, so this this trivia, you know, there's a little cash involved. Uh, so the, they ask you five questions. Mm-hmm. And if you get more questions right than Kennedy, you, you take home some cash. And, uh, and Do they say how much? 
Yes, they do. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's a that's a payoff. <laughs> Why the fuck is this not playing? Can't beat Kennedy. No, we're not doing this. Hello. Hey. Hi there. Hi, everyone. Josh is uh, dropping his daughter Maya off at her orthodontist appointment this morning. Mm. Mm. Okay. Tighten up them braces. Yes. Oh. Oh. Don't miss that. <laughs> Josh, we kick Kennedy out of the studio. Hi, Kennedy. Hey. Do you mind leaving the studio? I do not. Good luck. Thank you. Five pop culture trivia questions, no Josh. All you have to do is get more right than Kennedy. Like no... nope. And we'll give you $100. Pay... Does that pay for maybe one brace? <laughs> <laughs> one bracket. <laughs> one bracket. Is that what they're called? Uh, these, uh, the, excuse me, Kennedy has left the studio. She will not so be able to hear any of these questions or your $100? answers. hundred dollars? Question number one, if you've That's heard it. a rumor that Tom Selleck is leaving Blue excited. Bloods, the man himself says, don't I believe could do Blue that. Bloods revolves around a family of <laughs> If on Patreon, I had a trivia family. contest, I could technically give away a hundred dollars. Well, it, it gets better. So, Blue? anyway, so this man gets four of the five. This week in 1985, the movie Mask was released, starring Eric Stoltz as Rocky Dennis, and which iconic singer as his wild Nothing great uh, happens. Uh, you know, Can't he, be he gets, Kennedy. He gets Kennedy back in the right. studio, please. Kennedy! <laughs> uh, Oopsies. That was bad. Yeah, not the best. It was not good. All right, Kennedy. <laughs> yep. Josh got four out of five correct. Oh, my gosh. Well done. These are tough. You ready? I am. If oh you've heard God. a rumor that Tom Selleck is leaving Blue Bloods, the man himself says, don't believe it. Blue Bloods revolves around a family of New York cops called the Blank Family. Oh, I don't know. The Reagan family is what it says. <laughs> zero to zero. Question number two. This week in 1985, I mean, I don't know either, the movie give Mask a a was released, uh, released. It starred Eric Stoltz as Rocky way, Dennis and which iconic singer well. as his wild biker mom. The next yes. four, right? One to one. Question number two. Jay-Z's net worth jumped by 40% after he sold part of his champagne brand and which streaming service that he owned. Title. The story behind the champagne brand is that it's like not great champagne, and they just marked up the like, price no, by three hundred percent. That's pretty much all champagne. Yeah, yeah. Okay. is it? Yeah. Let's be honest. Most people can't tell what's good or bad. Most most champagnes aren't champagne, but that's a story for another day. Tied to yeah, question number four. Imagine Dragons are Everyone celebrating over a decade together. Story. Which of these is not an Imagine Dragon song? Thunder, Believer, or Counting Stars? Uh oh. Counting Stars. Kennedy, One Republic. Correct. You scared me, Kevin. I, you know, we've heard all of them so much. <laughs> Doesn't mean I remember them. <laughs> Tied to three. Question I number five. Shaka Khan and Idina Menzel recorded a new version of "I'm a Woman" for, for yeah. International it's Woman's so Day. Oh, good. Which famous actor mispronounced Idina's name and called her Adele Dazim at the Oscars a few years ago? John back? Travolta. It was. Woo, I was. So they topical tied. stuff. So they tied. So it's four four. Okay. So they bring Josh back on. And this is what they Worried have to there, Josh. That was a good one. That was a nail-biter. Nice job. Nice job. So Kennedy close. Gets, so Kennedy close. gets the win, Josh. I'm sorry with the tie. You do not get the cash or the win. <laughs> but we do appreciate you listening this morning. What would you like to say to Kennedy before you go? This is Josh from Noon, and I can't beat Kennedy. Carson and Kennedy on Mix 1041. So, so they sent him home with nothing. It says, tough shit, you tied. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even give you the $100. And uh, so it's actually a two-part segment where they bring on another guest. Jesus and, Christ. Uh, well, you know, I mean, not to uh, not to distract from this this great bit here, but <laughs> have you ever seen? Uh, I guess Penn and Teller have some show on like the CW or something. No, I've and not. it's it, I I I don't even know what it's called. It's called the Penn and Teller or something. But uh, the premise of the show is magicians come on and show Penn and Teller their trick, and Penn and Teller have to guess. Uh, if they can, if, if Penn and Teller figure out okay. how you did it, you you don't win anything. But you win if they if you stump them. Basically, that's mm -hmm. the idea. But so these magicians come on and do their trick, and then Penn says because Teller doesn't speak, so Penn says like, "Hey, great job with the trick." And then uh, Allison Hannigan, who's the host, goes, "Well, they're pretty sure they know how you did it, so thanks for coming on." <laughs> They don't explain to you how they did the trick. There's no, it's just everyone's like, yeah, they, they, uh, they got it. We I don't know it. how, but they did. Oh, I see. Cause they don't want to expose the magician's trick. So they just, I guess, but then what's the point of the show? I know there used to be an old TV show 
where someone said if you could prove that you're psychic or that you have mental powers and you're like able to move things with your mind he'd give you a hundred thousand dollars so he would have people come on who said they could like blow like phone book pages over but they would always put like you know dust on top of it to see if he was actually blowing and, and something of the like that was a yeah very similar but uh <laughs> no i gotta check out this pen and teller bit where they just go oh, oh. I, they're pretty sure they got it so yeah. see you later uh, okay well i'll see you so that's it for the uh for the kennedy son i do have a, a parody song to play you at the end oh, of the show to tease that a little bit it's uh have you heard of our good friend brooke and jubles of course well jubles, jubles is going no more yeah jubles is, is out brooke and jeffries you think i don't know that come on <laughs> Speaking of radio personalities who are currently out, uh, big RIP to the uh, oh to, to Kane, big, yeah, to the big Kane man. Very he's, sad. Uh, he's you know he's asking what are you doing. That was uh, the question he was asked at the Pearly Gates. Yeah, so what it's are up you in doing? the sky. Did did you see how he died? I just saw illness. Uh, well, I mean, it's I don't you know, not to bring the room down, but I heard uh, rumors that it may have been self inflicted. But I'm not. Ooh. I. I don't want to speculate on that because I have no idea. He should have been asking, how are you doing? Not what are you yeah. doing? <laughs> That's pretty that good, would, Justin. <laughs> that would have been uh, so it's always what are you doing, not how are you doing. <laughs> so I I also wanted to touch a little bit on uh I don't know much about it. I know you and Steve are big into like Bitcoin, and I think this has something to do with Bitcoin. Okay. It's this NFT thing which is like yes. non-transferable token i believe not non-fungible tokens yes so it's like you own a piece of digital media and it's not able to be replicated is that's the idea yeah which is why i'm confused by some of it because like the nba is putting shit out like hey you can have this lebron dunk <laughs> and it's all yours which makes no sense to me because that seems easily duplicated but there is shit like, I guess Banksy is putting... I don't know a lot about this. Like, I don't know if you should invest. What I've been saying um, is <clears throat> basically don't rule out the idea of uh, social media and idiots <laughs> being able to make a lot of money. Like, you might look so, at this and say that it's idiotic. Why would I put money into that? Mm -hmm. But so were, you know, baseball cards and Beanie Babies and Pokemon shit. And that was all worth a lot of money at some point. So, so, I mean, I, I think it's – even if this is really stupid, mm -hmm. it's definitely possible that for at least a short time you could make some money off of it. Um, but I don't know. People seem really hyped about it. And I guess it's a market that, like I said, I don't know a lot about, but it's pretty huge. So, you know, I was looking into it. I thought it would be kind of interesting. Then I saw a certain celebrity uh, endorse it, and I said, oh, this is going to turn out terribly, terribly wrong because it seems like whatever this man gets involved with in endorsements uh, always seems to end up in a lawsuit. Or, or something of the like. Uh, so that would be... Oh, let's hear What's up, superstars? I'm dropping my very oh, own geez. limited edition NFT cards this Thursday. Believe me when I say these cards are super sick. So let's give you a look. Roll the footage, baby. So anyway, so then it just shows his, you know, cards of him in logo-less football jerseys. <laughs> from him being a four-time Super Bowl champion. And apparently he's selling them. They're going to be a limited edition. As soon as I saw this, I said, okay, I'm out. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what the point of a digital Gronkowski football card would be. He's probably going to be selling it for way too much money. You know, some idiot's going to buy it. Just yeah. Like, like I said, it doesn't make any sense to me, but then, I mean, Lindsay Lohan was on the Bitcoin train. So some these people get involved, like fucking soldier boy as, <laughs> as fucking a coin <laughs> or something. So yeah. it's not always just because, like I said, just because the idiots get involved doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing. But yeah, I don't understand how the Gronk thing would be of any value to anyone. Yeah, I, I, I just don't see how. Uh, I just, I just think Gronk, you know, has this guy who comes up to him and says, "Hey, Gronk, this is a, this is a, the hot new thing." And right. Says, okay, sign me up. You know, he was big into uh, medicinal CBD or cannabis when he retired. Uh, yeah, he was, he's I in everything. He, every I, think he, I remember he had a party bus around yeah, Boston. He had a he had a party. He had a party cruise, or whatever. You could take a cruise with his family, and for like something outrageous, like two or three thousand dollars, he'd go and spend a weekend. I'd like to know how them. he is as a businessman because he's like a, he's got his fingers in all these in these pies, but. I'd like to know how many of them are 
moderately successful or very successful because like you hear about them and then they all go away like the Gronk yeah. party bus you don't hear anything about the cruise i mean it's a pandemic obviously so no one's doing that kind of stuff but you hear about these Gronk business ideas and then they evaporate into thin air but yeah so i saw Gronk was just getting into nfts and <laughs> and i was just like oh so that's very uh, exciting no that's gonna put it but that up. might mean like I, that, that might mean that because guys like him are getting into the market, it might mm-hmm. mean that the valuable things really are valuable. And then you've got people like Gronk kind of diluting the market a little bit. Mm. So like, cause I saw something like some album or some picture was recently sold for something like over a million dollars. Yeah. And what I don't understand is, so who's to say like, you just take a screenshot of that picture and say, I, Oh, this is the picture. Yeah, that's that's what I don't. You'd have to explain to me what exactly they do to make it so that it can't be duplicated. As well, like, like you well, said, especially if it's an image. Well, like the LeBron dunk. It's like, oh, you got this dunk, but then someone's like, hey, uh, I just searched up that dunk on YouTube. I I think it would just be the same as uh, you know a fucking Honus Wagner rookie card, where like it has to be the authentic version and there's got to be some way you can tell i don't know what that i don't know enough about tech to have any grasp of what that is but there has to be something where they would make it different from anything else because i could just technically i could just make a honus wagner baseball card but it wouldn't be worth four million dollars or whatever that's sold for yeah but but my worry is that you know like you said the nba selling you know certain plays are you going to be able to like watch highlights without having to buy the exact copy you want to watch Steph Curry in the three-point contest? Or right, but not only that, but it's all already out there. So that's what I didn't understand. Unless there's footage that they're scrubbing so that yeah. no one else can have it. But I, yeah, I, I don't know how any of that's going to work. I'm not getting into NFTs, but I did buy a little XRP because they're putting uh, NFTs on XR, on the XRP ledger. So maybe look into that, folks, for your more yeah. on money advice. You're familiar with uh, Martin Shrecky or Shirelli, the you know. Oh, the AIDS the, guy. Yeah, the AIDS yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. He, you're aware of how he bought like a singular copy of uh, Once Upon a Time in uh, in not Hollywood. It was uh, Once Upon a Time in Wu Tang. It was a it's a Wu Tang oh, album. Oh yes, only, they only yeah. He, they they sold copy. one album. And he bought it, right? Yes. Yeah. And he's not allowed to sell any copies of it until like I think the year three thousand. Jesus. It's something in the in the contract, so. I, I guess that's kind of of the similar, like he's allowed to stream it. He's allowed to play it at parties. I know in uh, 2016, he said that if uh, if Hillary won, he was going to destroy it. And if Jesus. Trump won, he was going to uh, stream it live on YouTube. And he streamed like the first song. And uh, then a couple of days later, he got, you know, his house raided by the FBI and he's been in jail ever since. So, yeah, well, I mean, he seems like a good guy. So I wish yeah. nothing but the best. I've, I've heard nothing, nothing but the best for, <laughs> for him. Uh, so, the last kind of uh, there's there's two more I guess you want to say stories. All right, I like Justin that, uh, run through the news. <laughs> yeah, so new Space Jam's coming out, Mike. I know you said yes. you know you had a big hard on for Lola or whatever mm-hmm. her name is. I personally ne- have never seen Space Jam, which is a shock. Really, to some people? Yeah. Oh, you gotta see Lola Bunny, my friend. Uh, I have seen pictures. If of you need a good recently. crank, <laughs> I've seen before and after pictures. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter are very upset. Yeah, very upset. She was hot. She was a smoke show, as the kids yeah, say. She did have. Uh, I mean, she did have her. Looks like her breast sizes would not be ideal for basketball. It seems like uh, it would right. get, get in, in the, the way. way a little bit. Yes. So yeah. I, she she did have a double mastectomy, and she's no longer wearing. She's wearing like shorts underneath her short shorts now. It's, it's very strange. Al. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about any of it. I don't like. At it. a uh, at a at a board meeting, they had to sit down and go, "Okay, listen, people are just too horny for this goddamn money." That's the weirdest thing is they had to talk about it. It's like yeah. I I really don't give a shit, but they had to make a conscious effort to change that, which is so, the way creepier part. So they're trying to take out. Where uh, it was was the original Space Jam a very sexual film? Oh yes, incredibly. Because now they have taken out. Uh, it was rated X. Pepe Le Pew, which was a he's a skunk, and he likes to kiss his skunk girlfriend. Uh, yeah, well, he was a pivotal character in Space Jam, so I really don't know how you're going to be able to follow the plot in Space Jam Two. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. So apparently, there was a scene that was recorded in 2019. Before 
this uh, article from the New York Times came out saying that, you know, Pepe Le Pew, Le Pew is a controversial character. He doesn't ask for consent. Seems like he's forcing himself upon. Yeah. Uh, his you know what I love about that story is they're just copying the Dave Chappelle bit. Like they're taking Dave Chappelle's stand up going, this guy's yeah. a fucking rapist <laughs> 20 yeah. years later and applying it seriously. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of, you know, parody becomes real life. So, <laughs> so Pepe Le Pew, uh, apparently they cut out the scene. They're not saying exactly why they cut out the scene. I'm you know, not... you know what would really shut people like me up is if it was just a violent rape. Like if it was a <laughs> brutal, like a brutal Pepe Le Pew assault. And they're like, yeah, see, we cut it out. And you're like, all right, you know what? I'll shut my mouth. The, the <laughs> From now on, to... I'm going to trust you guys. The Toon Squad had to come out with a statement. You know, <laughs> because, you know, because there's just some horrific, like, Adam Jones sort of thing. It's this just... is not indicative of who we are as a brand. <laughs> he just punches the shit out of, you know, his skunk girlfriend in the elevator <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> that would be, that would change my mind on everything. I would be like, oh, you know what? I, I've, I've been an asshole. I, they've, they went over the line. They, there actually is a line now and they crossed it. So I think there is a little bit of, I don't want to call it hypocrisy, but just weird sentiment from the right where they're saying, oh, they're taking away my childhood. You know, Pepe Le Pew was such a big part. I, I think if you asked a hundred people who your favorite cartoon character of all time was, very few people would oh, say. Oh, no one would say Pepe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. No, nobody would. It's, uh, I understand, you know, Looney Tunes, you know, is becoming more woke. I know they've taken away Elmer Fudd's gun. He no longer walks around with a gun. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Lola Bunny doesn't, you know, she's not fuckable anymore. And I'll say this. And I don't think that Pepe Le Pew, I can't believe I'm saying this sentence. I don't believe that Pepe Le Pew contributed to rape culture. <laughs> but I will yeah. say, if you're a guy who says my favorite character was Pepe Le Pew, well, you should probably watch out for that guy. <laughs> like, that's probably cover your drink around that kind of a guy. You know, that's a weird thing to be your favorite. I'm surprised they didn't like get at him, you know, for being a French stereotype of, a, oh, I'm a woman's lady. You know, my name's Pepe Le Pew. Right. Uh, a woman's yeah. lady, you say. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, Mike. I know what it's, you mean. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm trying here. I'm trying here. The show <laughs> takes a week off. People are clamoring for something. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I like host Justin. I think, you know what? I was ready to kind of make fun of you for being nervous and stammering a little bit, but you haven't done that at all. You've been very, I'm like, I'm, people I'm will, people will knock the content for sure. Oh, but yeah, they could so knock 100%. me for that as well. As 100%. far as hosting, you've done a great job. hundred percent. So I have a question to ask you, please. Uh, you know, you made some money in 2020. I know in the stock market, and I know that a lot of the stock market is a lot of capital gains in the stock market is taxed. Mm -hmm. I have two options for you. One is that you continue paying taxes on those capital gains. The other is that you're not allowed to say the N word anymore because according to <laughs> oh, I... MSNBC radio. <laughs> oh, what a setup, Justin. You're a master of the segue. <laughs> you would be, you would, you would say, listen, I don't care about all these tax cuts. I'll pay hundred percent in taxes. Just yeah. let me speak my mind. So, so <laughs> yes. Joy Reid, of uh, of uh, you might know her from being hacked uh, in Back to the Future, where someone hacked her account yeah. years and years and it was years very ago. Sad. It, uh, Cyber so bullies. She, <laughs> she she had a a thing on I believe it was Friday or maybe it was Saturday. She had a tweet where it said, "I'll say it again: People on the right would trade all the tax cuts for the ability to open." For the ability to openly say the N word, like in the quote, good old days. To them, Jesus. not being able to be openly racist and discriminatory without consequence is oppression. Trump is the avatar for this freedom. So so she 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 goes on record. I, I like how she starts it off. She says, I'll say it again. So she has said this sentiment before. <laughs> She's this always been a point it. of hers before where she goes <laughs> and she says, Hey, listen, I've said it. Republicans think they're all for task task cuts and all, all this jazz. What yeah. they really want is they want to be openly racist. Yeah. Uh, you, you see these race. multi-millionaires, you know, trying to push for an extra 1% cut or, you know, not pay this tax cut. What they really want deep down is, is to just be able to say the N word. It's that, see, I don't know if that's true, but if it is, we should just start fining people. For, like if <laughs> you get rid of taxes well, yeah. and just <laughs> find the right for use of that word. And I feel like we'd be making some, some buku bucks. I think we could all swallow our pride for, you know, 50 bucks a pop 
of them saying the n-word yeah i i I think i think it was an outrageous statement to make it's weird that it wasn't in response to the papa john thing though i just assumed it was in response to that no no so because that guy yes should not be speaking for a business (laughs) you want to talk about someone who's just what a life he lives i believe at one point he said he ate like 12 pizzas in a week yeah he Uh, was getting he was weird where he i don't know why he's still doing interviews I don't. Isn't start he another like, business, John? He's Get no over longer it. affiliated with the company, correct? Uh, I don't know because he founded it, so I don't know if he technically has some affiliation. But he's not. He was removed as CEO. I know. Mm-hmm. And he but yeah, he on. keeps doing. He's all. He's wearing the same shirt. He's still got a red shirt on. And I just like picturing him because he said he he spent twenty months <laughs> wiping that from his vocabulary. And I just like yes. picturing him with a coach. Come on, <laughs> John, you can do it. <laughs> Just stop saying it. There's a, there's a lot of uh, funny tweets out there. Where it's like someone looking in the mirror. It's like, today we only say it three times. Only three <laughs> times today, John. So, so. Uh, you can yeah, do can... this, John. Come on. So I could see her saying that in response to the Papa John, but the Papa John thing happened after this. This was right. about uh, something about masks being oppress- oppression or, or something like that. And she quote tweeted and said, listen, what white people really want is they want to be able to say this racial slur and gotcha. they would pay out the nose for it. They would pay, you know, they'd bring back the, you know, FER days of 92% tax rates. Where we should just, have them do but, it. And I'm saying, I, I, I have them pay the toll. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, so, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm in no place to, to, you know, say what joy, I, I don't know. Joy, uh, joy reads experience or anything like that, but I just thought it was a, uh, a little, little strange. Oh, her new name on Twitter, by the way, is Joyan Pro Democracy and Masks Read. So uh, that rolls right off the tongue. Yes. So, are you uh, having? Uh, am I the? Am I the only guest booked for this week? I'm trying to get Carabas on. Now, uh, with Carabas, will you only talk about baseball with him? Because I feel like you've lined up a litany of uh, uh, social justice questions for, for me. <laughs> I, th- th- these were just things I just, I just found on Twitter. No, I know. It is all. That's why that's why I I don't get like people give me shit for talking about it. But it's like, oh, I mean, look at fucking Twitter every day. It's all anyone's talking about is that bullshit. I mean, I do. So there's two Vanderbilt pitchers. Okay, they're planning on going in the first round, probably in the in the top four. Uh, That's what what I look forward to. Do you think uh, who who of the two do you think is going to pan out? Do you think Carabas will confront you about you butchering that? uh, uh, What was it? Carlos Correa question? Oh, probably. Yeah, that was have it out with you. You probably put him in a bad mindset. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, yeah, I, I take the L on that one. That's probably that why bad. he was so shaken up during the game. Mark Appel, he just couldn't get that out of his head. But yeah, I, I mean, I hope Carabas reaches reaches out. I'd love to do something with him sometime. This You're week. just hoping he reaches out. Yeah, I know. I knew. I knew you'd say yes. I'm going. <laughs> I, 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 don't know, I don't know if you've heard. Me, oh, you didn't ask Carabas. Oh, I did ask Carabas. Oh, okay. I was gonna say I'm the sucker that you're like. You're no, like, no. Cool, cool. I'm hoping he reaches back out and says. Uh, oh, okay. I thought I something. just pictured you hoping that he would somehow <laughs> know you <laughs> wanted him on. Yes, I'm sending out good vibes to the universe. Yes, and good. Hopes Jared Carabas comes back. But um, no, I, I I figured you'd say yes. I don't know if you I don't know if you heard my interview on Kirk and Off, the uh, the weekly wrap up show on a podcast, but I, I attributed to like all my quote unquote success and being in this world to you. And more specifically, you being blind. I said, if wow. Mike had sight, I do not believe I would be a member of the Kirk Minahan show because I think after a month they would have said, uh, what is this? What is this guy doing again? Mike, it's almost like you've never used life. that line right to my face, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I like, <Ugh. laughs> you know, it's, there's something that it really takes away from you giving me credit for that when you have to bring it up in front of me. You know, yeah. it's like if I if I do the dishes around the house, it's like that's a nice thing. But then if I go, hey, Albert, you notice I did the dishes? That kind of takes away from it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's what that's what I feel like right now. Like you know, like I said something nice about you once. I don't. Mike, I've all, I've been I've been the biggest gearhead. I'm actually a Patreon subscriber. I appreciate it, but if you uh... save your money, you don't have to do that. Nope, nope. You have the login. <laughs> nope. I uh, I, I have some important questions about a certain stand up special that's coming out later this month that I believe needs to be asked. Oh, God. So, uh, does Brian Regan have a special coming up? He has a special coming out, baby. Oh, god. So, that's pretty much, uh, I don't oh, get I... the bit. <laughs> Do I talk about him a lot? Because, no. for anyone that doesn't know on the YouTube channel, Justin will call my show and ask about Brian Regan. He'll comment 
it's constantly Brian Regan questions as if it's the only thing I talk about, but I don't feel like I mentioned him that much. I don't know. I mean, you say have any questions. You don't say have any questions, not including. That's you know, true. That's true. I do open the floor. Comedy. I, mean, I guess, so, I guess it's my fault. That's, I mean, I don't know, you know, <laughs> so uh, I, I do have the Papa John's comments. If you want to, to hear him say, yeah, comments, why not? <laughs> how he's trying to scrub. Cause I, I like this one. Cause it's nice when I'm on the other side of one, you know? It's nice when even I'm like, yeah, this guy shouldn't be talking into a microphone. <laughs> Take me back to a few years ago when you start to see these headlines coming out and smearing your good name. How did you feel at the time when you were <laughs> smearing your good name? This is on One American News um, State Wars. of Shock. Um, unbelievable. Um, He's still I couldn't wearing understand it. His I, Papa John's. I, mean, I told you, yeah. You have a public but can I pause for a second? Because that, what was Papa John's good name? I, I like remember. that. They're, they're, they're building up, up into this, you know, reverent figure. I, I, He's I, Papa John's is an option for uh, towns in the Midwest that don't have Domino's or Pizza Hut. That's what essentially what Papa John's is. I don't know how good his name was. Well, I just remember. I remember after Super Bowl Fifty, I was a big Papa John's guy because the first person after Peyton Manning wins the Super Bowl, the first person to walk out on the field and congratulate him, and give him a kiss on the cheek was Papa John. Yeah, I just, I just thought that was the, uh, the the funniest thing. So, but that'll happen. After... By the way, I'm sure Peyton will get dragged to the mud. If this guy keeps talking, I'm sure Peyton will get in trouble at some point. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. I, I I believe he sold. I know he was big franchisee of Papa John's. Yeah, but I believe he sold everything after the uh, the scandal that happened a couple of years ago. So let's get back to John Schnatt- Schnatner. Paints its chairman uh, complicit, passive, or active. They paint the founder as a racist they know he's not a racist it's just i don't remember this accent and in I, the commercials no it's uh it, it's... hey y'all come on down to papa john's <laughs> he was <laughs> he had perfect dialect in those commercials and uh i i don't know if you can see the screen right now but on the uh the title on the screen is the depths of cancel culture so oan's really getting into uh oh good i'm glad papa john. so, so papa john's kind of explains how he's trying to uncancel himself Yes, let's bring Mike yes. Lindell on for this segment. <laughs> yes. I used to lay in bed just going, how did they do this? And we've had three goals for the last 20 months to get rid of this uh, N-word uh, in my uh, vocabulary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's had three hey. goals in 20 months. Well, that's how you become a leader of industry is you set lofty goals for yourself and you achieve them. Yes. You know, you so, say, I've, it's going to take me 20 months, but I'll scrub this word from my vocabulary. <laughs> When like, I've never seen, like, he had the upper hand. Because I remember people were defending him when that happened. Because what he originally got fired for, I don't even know if you remember what it was. I, but it was taken was completely out of context. Yes. It was saying, like, that Colonel Sanders used that word. And he didn't even get in trouble for that. Like, he was saying how outrageous it was that Colonel Sanders didn't get in trouble for that type of shit. Yes. And he's done everything he could. <laughs> To destroy any sense of goodwill or people defending him that he had by just sounding like a moron every fucking time he talks. So, yeah, so it took him apparently 20 months. So I don't know if he hired a coach to go around and like spray him with a water bottle. That's how whenever, I like to picture it. Yeah. Whenever he uh, he gets close to, you know. Uh, you can do this, his- John. Just so. a Rocky montage with him <laughs> trying to not say this. And dictionary and everything else uh, because it's just not true. Is that word in the dictionary, by the way? Oh, well, I'm sure it must be. I mean, it is. He, I mean, he would know, I guess. He's looked it up enough. To, it, it he's like, is there a loophole I can get away with? <laughs> I can just picture him like just, just like him training, like singing like a, a Kanye song and just having someone like nearby. Yeah, like, he only know, sings the uh, radio version. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, he's just making sure that he's uh, he, he's he's on the right track. How they did this and get on with my life. If Papa John's would just say, hey, we got in a hurry, we didn't follow proper. Take me back to it. So, that was that. So he, he's, he's still trying to push to, to get on the public board. He is, the man is worth a insane amount of money. I don't, uh, get, why, I don't get why Papa John's is so popular. But I guess, I, I, like I said, I think it's towns that don't, like in the Midwest or wherever, that don't really have, you know, local pizza places that are any good. They turn to, seen- they turn to the Papa. Have you ever seen uh, his version of uh, Cribs, pretty much? No. It's uh, YouTube, and he gives a tour of his house. And uh, it's very strange. In what way? It's just... Let me look this up real quick. Um, 
Oh boy. Has, like, Hang on to your hats, kids. Say again? It's like golden statues right when you come in. Really? Yes. Well, he does. He seems like a guy that likes likes you knowing his status. Like, obviously, he loves being in front of the camera. He loves you knowing he ran Papa John's. He loved you knowing that uh, he was involved with the NFL, and that Peyton Manning was his buddy, all that kind of stuff. So it was on – it's actually on TikTok from the real Papa John. Where, Jesus Christ. Here we go. And uh, it's at the Papa John's John Smatter. So it's, it's, it's him, and it says – Enough, Tor- John. <laughs> tour of we Papa get it. John's you made Papa John's. Crib. No one's that impressed. Tour of Papa John's crib, pizza emoji, uh, surprised emoji, pizza emoji. Okay. Howdy, Papa John. Welcome to my crib. Oh. Oh. What? Start off with the clock. Eagles go up. Several thousand feet. There's a giant all eagle. The way down right before they hit the earth, they separate. So they don't get hurt or killed. Perfect time. He's wearing a red shirt that says Pop. Eagles mating. He's always wearing it. That's his, that's his uniform. Four times an hour. Check it out. So he's just showing this. Uh... Okay. Off the main floor here is the library. This is where I film uh, a lot of uh, footage. Uh, this is where I work, write letters. Um, let's, uh, who was this uh, for? Who was asking? For stay this? tuned. You got to keep following. Stay tuned for part two. There was never a part two. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he said, you got to, you got to, because you know, uh, all the pop heads out there were thinking, uh, oh, I can't wait to see this guy's library. <laughs> I think, I think people would be more sympathetic towards him if he grew the handlebar mustache and had the apron and chef's hat on. Like if he was, it looked like a real pizza guy, but he just looks like a corporate stiff. Yeah, he just kind of looks like uh he looks like he would make like a good kind of you know background character on like the Sopranos. Well, he, <laughs> you nailed the show. He would fit right in there. The language would be flying. Yeah, uh, I actually uh, saw on Twitter there was a uh, you know the scene where uh, he o- opens up uh, in the Sopranos where he opens up the uh, it's it said uh. This is this is not going to translate well to audio, but the uh, when Papa John's goes to cook a meal and and what's his name opens up the thing and he sees Uncle Ben's rice and he has a heart attack. <laughs> Jeez. So that was uh that was fun. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I have. I do have this parody song from Brook and Jubals if you would like to hear. It's, Why the hell uh, not? It's it's quite quite something. My favorite part of it is they have some guy in the background who's always cackling like, far away from his mic yeah and that's kind of like his thing oh i know he, uh, i know i know brook and jeffrey brook and jubal's inside and out my friend so young jeffrey has a new song and you know it relates to the there's pandemic. a lot of interesting memories that we've made together over the past year and i think it is important that as we enter into a new phase of the health crisis Hopefully a more positive, more normal one. I hate his setup. People should look back and reflect on what a complete and total train wreck this past oh year has been. <laughs> I mean, you got to learn from I haven't, I hadn't heard that take. Is the last year, what happened? Mistakes that we've been rough for people? Yeah, it's I mean, not. It's I mean, been we have to pat ourselves on the back, though, you for can. being able to survive this long. And that's why instead of singing Maroon 5's hit song, Memories, it's Ooh. Young Jeffrey's Pandemories. Oh, you're kind of wearing maroon today. Like, oh, I, that I was not even planned. His hamstrings are hurting after that one. Oh, okay, yeah. No, Pandemories. I feel like All I right. just touched you. <laughs> All right. I feel like this song is going to make me cry. The room has erupted in merriment. It's been an emotional year, well, you guys. I mean, I she's almost crying. Brooke's almost done crying. Yeah. Here we go. I'm going to point when I'm ready. Point. Isn't that quirky? He says point instead of actually pointing. Yeah, it's interesting. This year we've been through a lot. Cringe looking back at the start when we thought it was cute. Counting days in the quarantine. This is me on day 20. Okay, now there hasn't been a joke yet. <laughs> and that guy is in hysterics. Yes. I, I don't know. He, even name. by Jeffrey's standards, he has not made a joke yet. 
So he, he he's already dying laughing. I think Brooke is tearing, <laughs> tearing up a little bit. So. Mullets came back the same year as the plague. We had breakfast, drinks more regularly. Eggs vanity with some Hennessy and drunk by noon. That first March felt like forever. Totally. We were all going insane. One thing brought us all together. And Joe Exotic was his name. No. For a whole month, remember? I remember my sweatpants I never changed. I once ate a whole lasagna inside of my shower space. Yeah. <laughs> my hands are getting laugh. Sanitized. I feel like that has to hurt. Washing like it's a violent laugh. I, 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 I found out that all my life I've been doing it the wrong way. I Beers in a bar we could not no. Tears in my car now that happened a lot when I drive out to get the groceries but forgot my mask in my room. Dang it. Toast first responders, hooray. Okay, so all right. That's yeah, I've had, I've had enough. <laughs> so so uh so so you know, every, everyone always likes to think, you know, uh the parody inside the Kirkman M world's pretty good, you know. We complain sometimes when uh, when a song gets put out that isn't. It's not easy, quality. but yeah, look at Jeffrey as the example. But, uh, Pandemories. If uh, you guys would like to download that, just go to uh, Burke and Jeffrey's page. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's out there. Well, thank you, Mike, for for joining me. My pleasure, uh, my young man. Very, very thank uh, you for having me. Before before we before we go, I, I want to scold you a little bit here. Okay. I think you are the worst promoter of your yeah. Patreon. Whenever you go on the Kirkman and show, yeah, you say, please don't subscribe. Uh, yeah, I don't want them to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, what I mean by that is just like, you know, if, you, if you're someone, you've made up your mind on me, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. if you don't like me, you're not going to like me alone, certainly, you know, so that's, that's all I mean when I say that. I think what you should say is, so you have it set up where you don't get charged as soon as you sign up, you get charged the first of every month. Right. So what I think you should say, <laughs> this is just, you know, I, I took like two business classes. In oh, okay. I'm only so. used them. Yeah, so I mean, you should be listening to me. I got decent grades, so you should say, "Hey, listen, sign up to Patreon.com/slash Blind Mike. If you don't like it, cancel it before March 31st, and it's all free. You won't." Is get that true though? That is 100% true. Okay, they don't get charged. Correct. They will the reason charged. I haven't said that is because I wasn't sure if that was true or not. So if you sign up on, let's say you sign up April 2nd, right. You get the whole month you, free. You get the whole month of April, and then the first day of June. Yeah. Is when you actually May. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't also get May free. <laughs> the first day of <laughs> that May. That'd be a horrible system. <laughs> uh, you will get charged. So, so I might have to I, think about changing this business model. <laughs> that seems like I'm getting ripped off. But yeah, no, that you you are right. I should I should be better at that. But I I, I look at it this way. Anytime I've listened to a podcast it's not the plugs that get me to check that person out it's whether or not i like them so if someone you know thinks i'm funny or or dumb or whatever like they want to listen to my shitty opinions then they'll make that decision on their own and if they don't want to they shouldn't also this way too you could get all excited you know right before the end of march you have let's say a thousand people signed up like, yeah. oh, goodness. <laughs> they're about to you know they're about yeah. to cash out they all flee and then, you know, the last day, it's just deleted their account. Deleted their yeah, account. the second of the month is always devastating. I'm like, where did all these people go? <laughs> so anyway, uh, thank you, Mike, for doing this. My pleasure, uh, buddy. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been too long. It's been it too long. It certainly has. It's, uh, you know, from the days of Mike and the Minna fans to Sako. It's, uh, you know, you spread your wings and you flew. And, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, and now, now, I am, <laughs> now I am the egg. All right. Well, we're really limping towards the end here. <laughs> With that, th thanks everyone for us uh, sticking through this, and uh, I'll hopefully talk to. You.